All right, hello YouTube. Uh, today's not going to be 3DS hacking related, but instead I'm going to show off something a little different. I got a few retro computers I want to show off today. Um, this is in a Compaq. That's Compaq Armada M700. Got this bad boy off uh, eBay for only about twenty-seven dollars. Did have a. It did not have a hard drive caddy. So I had to get that separately and I had to get the AC adapter separately. So I actually spent maybe like maybe thirty, thirty-five dollars on this. Well that's not bad, and that the battery is actually good. Which is kind of a rarity on eBay with these old computers. Usually these batteries are dead, don't charge. It appears to hold a full charge. I did a calibration in Windows 98 and idling it took three about three and a half hours before it's the uh started the charge phase again. So that's not bad. Of course, it's probably going to be a lot shorter if you're actually using the laptop. The interesting thing about the reason I got this uh, this this particular laptop is because it would probably be good for um, retro retro gaming like MS DOS stuff. Uh, as you know, you have to run most MS DOS games in a virtual or like a DOS box sort of thing on modern computers, and even then, they sort of don't run right. As you can see, this thing's a dual boot system. I put Windows 98 on it and Windows XP. Uh, this particular brand did have a restore CD where you can put the original operating system back onto it where, with the recovery partition and everything. Uh, unfortunately, I can, can't find the quick restore CD that came with this laptop. The, the few sites that sell it scalp it for like $20 or something crazy like that. If they even legit even have the CDs. But anyway, I'm going to show off a uh, Let's see if I can show off Rayman, but as I recall, as I recall, that DOS, the audio driver is a little finicky with this particular laptop. I won't complain. Most game, most of the DOS games I've tried to work. Rayman doesn't seem to find the Sound Blaster Pro. The audio for CD music plays and the AVI files that Rayman is known to have play just fine. Unfortunately, the sound effects in the game don't work, but that's not going to be a problem. I'll just I'll just show off Wolfenstein instead. This is what it looks like. I have the taskbar on top because the very first time I've ever used Windows when I was a kid, the, the guy who had it had the computer had had it on the top for some reason and I can't remember what wallpaper he used this is the closest I could remember it being he probably used a personal photo of this but I was pretty sure it was a photo of the Alamo but that's just a guess because you know the last you know I was like 10 years old at the time that's like 20 years ago anyway um yeah this is Windows 98 this laptop has a full charge right now as you can see, 98 percent remaining. Let's see here. Um, mo the main thing I'm going to show off is the uh, DOS games. And the issue with this particular laptop is the audio drivers are kind of wonky in DOS. For some reason, the FM synthesis is quieter than the rest. So I have to sort of rebalance everything. So it, DOS games don't sound too good if I, if I don't have a headphones plugged in but in this demonstration I'm just gonna hook up the audio directly via the uh, line in jet line out line in jack on my PC and what I'm gonna do that after it boots because it likes to send this large click noise through the audio when it reboots oh I almost tried to cancel that for a second there yeah it defaults to 98 the particular drivers that seem to work best for audio and DOS is the Maestro, Maestro 3, Solo, I think. And these are the volume settings I had to use to get it to sound balanced because the FM bomb, even though I have it maxed out, it doesn't really play at that volume. It's very quiet for some reason. So I'm going to give you an example. First, I'm going to plug in the headphones, the line in on the headphone jack there. I'm going to go to MS-DOS. I 
And this kit, the, the condition of this laptop when I got it was pretty good. It's only got a few scratches. The the, the buttons on the touchpad, well, it doesn't have a touchpad. Mouse buttons work pretty well. The left button's a little a little weak. Uh, if I press over here, it doesn't register. But if I, as long as I press here, it's fine. The right the right mouse button's fine. This middle button's fine. The nub, you can tell this nub is old because the rubber's like calcified or something, but it still works. So uh, I was expecting to have to replace something on this keyboard when I got it, but surprisingly everything's in working order. I'm going to show off a few games that I collected. I haven't put on here. Uh, let's see. Well, this is the very first game I've ever modded. Let's see if it'll get good audio through this pine out jack. You hear it? Yeah, I hear it pretty well. But you'll see that the the audio is a little wonky when I start playing because certain sound effects are very loud compared to everything else in this game. It's not really an issue with the game, it's the drivers. Now that traditionally this game used arrow keys, but I remapped the controls to the traditional WASD. I don't have a mouse hooked up, so... Now this doesn't look very good on camera though. It's not the best screen a laptop can have, but I mean, this thing came out in like 1999, I think. And see, this is my own personal mod of this game. I pretty much redid, uh, I like added on to the first level, but then everything else was full, all custom levels. I think I did a full episode. Maybe like the first two levels of episode two. As you can see, this game runs pretty well. There's another game I, I, I used to play when I was younger. On that same computer that, that I talked about. And I'm going to show that. The audio for this game seems to work a little better on this laptop. And this really old driving game. The thing I really liked about this game is it had a track editor. And I had a lot of fun with that when I was younger. I believe this one uses the arrow keys. Currently, this this particular model of the M700 has uh, the easy point mouse thing, no trackpad, 600. Uh, what's paying attention there? 650 megahertz Pentium 3, and currently has 320 megabytes of RAM. 64 megabytes of it is integrated. This laptop could handle um, up to 512 megabytes of RAM. So I'm curious to know what would happen if I try to jam one gigabyte into this, but I'm not about to waste money on 512 megabyte sticks of RAM to find out that they don't work. <laughs> and now the curious thing about this laptop is, unlike some of the newer laptops where you hold the power button to turn it off, that doesn't work with this one. There's a switch on this side over here. And you have to flick that to turn it off. And as you can see, the audio kind of popped when it turns off it does that but I also want to show off the optical drive for this system a lot of these older laptops like to use proprietary optical drive designs but this particular system looks proprietary but it's not and I'm going to show that right now there was only a couple models optical drives that were available for this laptop there was a, a DVD player, a CD-ROM DVD player combo, and then a CD burner DVD combo, but they didn't come out with a DVD burner for this drive. But, you can act probably more than likely adapt any IDE interface optical drive to this system. And I'm going to show off this real quick by taking this apart here. This looks, this is the proprietary jack they used for their multi-bay. But there's a secret. And I'm going to show off that secret with this computer right now. And I'm pretty sure the E500, which is the top model version of this thing, this thing was like used for business, business class uh, people back in the day. But I'm going to show off a little secret that maybe not many people know about this laptop. Is that this comes off to reveal an adapter board. And all you have to do is lift up on it. No, not there. This pops right off. I just have to... I have to be gentle, I don't want to break it. There you go, and it reveals a standard IDE interface for laptop drives. 
for the optical drive. Back in the day, IDE, before SATA was a thing, there was IDE, and, and laptops adapted this standardized IDE port for the optical drive and a laptop. But, of course, Compaq, in all their infinite wisdom, wanted to use something unique. I guess because this would be easier to pull in and pull out. And at first glance, you think you wouldn't really use your own drives in this system, but you can. You just have to uh, scrap the uh, parts off an existing drive. You have to have their parts from an existing compact drive. You take that off, and then there's an adapter board on this thing. It's just It reveals standard screw hole placements for a standard, uh, standard optical drive. And if you take these off, you can probably, more than likely, put this metal assembly onto any drive you want. As long as it's IDE, it will fit into this machine. Oh crap, I hope I... Oh, okay. Good. I thought I lost that screw for a second. And... Of course, this one's held on with this little plastic adhesive thing. You could probably just take that off. I'm not going to do it here because I don't have a drive to actually put this on, but... But I'm going to take this off to show you that it is, in fact, a standard IDE optical drive. It's a little time consuming. You just, you just take that off. And then there's this. And I'll use my longer screwdriver for that one. As you can see right here, that's where the screw is. These screws were tricky initially, but I did already take this apart once, so these screws aren't as, aren't as tight as they used to be. There it goes. Very carefully take that screw out. And then you very carefully remove this one. I, I do plan on replacing this drive. And as you can see, this comes right off to reveal a very standard optical drive. I mean, if they have IDE Blu-ray drives, you could probably pop one into this thing if you wanted to, uh, but I doubt it could actually handle Blu-ray playback. This thing does run XP reasonably well, so maybe you could probably use Blu-ray for storage, but you certainly wouldn't. Uh, I kind of drilled a hole here through the plastic plating to uh, make the LED shine through, because for whatever reason, they decided not to put a, a hole there for the LED. Now, um, this faceplate is kind of proprietary. It it has a standard size to it, so if you take a standard drive, it'll fit. It just won't really match up with the case quite as well because there's this bit of an underlip with this faceplate. As you can see right here, there's a bit of a gap at the bottom here. So it won't line up quite as well as an original drive, but maybe you could probably put this faceplate on any drive you want. Let me take this optical drive and see out. Now this one is held in with a clip on this side here and a clip here, just like most drives, but unlike uh, standard drives, they decided to hold it in with screws. So you have to take this screw out, this screw out, and this screw right here out, and then maybe pry off this clip and it'll pop out, and maybe with a Dremel tool or something, you can probably jam this onto a your replacement drive if you really wanted it to match up. But I know, that's not really a required step. But there you go. A little little secret to an old computer is you probably use any drive you want in this thing because they're the original parts they provided were pretty lackluster compared to nowadays because their burners only burn CDs. Another thing I'd like to show sometime in the future is uh, my Macintosh SE just chilling over there in the corner there. But yeah, there you go. That pretty much shows off the uh, Armada M700 and this laptop's been there to perform pretty well for me. The only thing I don't like about it is the caddy design for the uh, for the uh, hard drive here. And the, the one I got off eBay was a very cheap build. I guess maybe they originally had a, pl a metal enclosure for the drive. This one, however, is made of plastic doesn't mesh very well but it does work so and there's the sticker it did come with the the stickers in good condition for the CD key it has a CD key for both Windows 98 and Windows 95 interestingly um, it comes with a 
PCMSCI. This thing came with this. This is what I got. Pretty much this thing was already inserted when I got this laptop. That's cool. This is a very unique Ethernet card design here. Maybe this is per the standard, but they wanted to, I guess they didn't want this whole thing jutting out. So this is how they did their Ethernet cord jack on this little tiny slim PCMCI slot or card bus slot, whatever they call it. Let me find my Ethernet cord. So I'll show you how this works. They don't really make them like this anymore. <laughs> now the way this little jack works is you just stick it in like this. Looks very flimsy, but that's how they managed to jam an Ethernet jack into this tiny, slim card. Certain models of this uh, Armada did have a built-in uh, LAN as well as a modem combo. Put that back in there. You can see there's the modem jack, but there's also this. There is an Ethernet jack on this laptop. I think it's on most, if not all, models of the M700 variants that they made. But as you can see here, they put a plastic cover over the Ethernet jack. If I can get this damn thing to come off, there it goes. See, there's, it's got the jack, but this particular model only has a modem. Now, you could probably take this off and get the part to replace a different part, get the modem with the Ethernet. It has all the connections inside to hook up the Ethernet jack to the board that they made for this laptop. So you could upgrade this to Ethernet, but I've decided not to do that. I'm Instead, I've gone out and got a card bus Wi-Fi slot because I am about to... This is the laptop after all. I don't want cords hanging off of it. So I'm not really going to make use of Ethernet. But I've had to make use of Ethernet just to send to get files onto this thing. The main reason I got this laptop is not just for um, MS-DOS games, but because it had a printer port. It has a printer port. And I'll show you right now. It's got serial, VGA, docking station, which is interesting. The docking station this thing uh, uses has the ability to plug in a PCI card in their docking station. So I guess you could expand have a whole array of PC, PCI cards to add on to this via the docking station and then a parallel port and one USB 1.0 port and of course the hybrid PC PS2 keyboard jack but this is what I that what I have in tandem with with my Macintosh SE is this little zip drive here parallel port edition and I have an identical one over there, except that one's SCSI or SCSI as people like to call it. It's kind of blurry because I don't have autofocus on this camera. But yeah, I use uh, this in tandem with that to put files onto my Macintosh SE. And before I got this laptop, I used that computer that's not really hooked up down there, that old Pentium 4. It's very bulky and I didn't, I don't, it's not fun to use. So this is what I got instead. And my tests show that it works pretty well with Windows 98. Interesting thing is the the per particular program I'm using to access Mac formatted zip disks does not want to read zip disks Mac zip disks in Windows XP for some reason, but it works in 98, so I won't complain. The latches are still here and everything, but there you go, a little demonstration of an old laptop from years past. It's got a composite out which is kind of finicky. It doesn't detect my portable TV, my little black and white TV I got up there. If I plug it in, it doesn't enable the output, but I plugged it into my VCR and it detects that. And the trick with that is you just I just saved the profile for that display in the, the ATI control panel so that I don't have to have anything plugged into it to enable it. I can just force enable it by switching to that profile after I create it. But there you go. The Amarta M700. If you're looking for a decent MS DOS gaming machine laptop. So certainly will do the job. I mean, if you really, really want the best audio compatibility, you should probably get an older laptop, maybe with a a more Sound Blaster compatible card. This one doesn't have the best audio compatibility with MS DOS games. There is the few issues I run into, but 
with uh, Wolfenstein 3D in particular. I also have Hocus Pocus on this computer um, and, a, and a couple other games. Hocus Pocus plays pretty well on this one too. There's this old Mario DOS game I also play and it runs flawlessly on this machine. It's always been jerky on a DOS box and that's also one reason why these old computers are perfect for MS-DOS games. Because these newer machines just don't play DOS games the same way. Just as well as the original hardware does. I mean, I, for example, I have a Sega Genesis Model 2 here. And I, and I could just as well just play it on my DS, 3DS, via this. Probably not the best example of their collection of emulated Sega games. Their emulator on this probably isn't the best. But why emulate it when well, you can use it on the original hardware? And I... And the same holds true for MS-DOS. Why virtualize it on a modern PC when I could just run it on original hardware? And that's what I've done here. And there you go. Maybe I'll show off that SE at some point in the future. I've been wanting to upgrade it to an SE30, but looking more like I'll probably reserve my funds for the Nintendo Switch when that comes out. So probably not this year. Anyway, I'm going to end this video and put this drive back together. <laughs> It's not that hard to take apart as long as you got the original parts here, the, the brackets, the rear bracket, and this little adapter board. You can put any optical IDE interface optical drive into this laptop. It looks super easy. I mean, I happen to have two laptop optical drives on my PC because the main reason being is I have control over the eject process. I used to remember when I was younger, I had the full size standard computer desk uh, tower computer optical drive with, with the standard motorized tray now, the thing that annoyed me is, is like to it likes to pull the tray back in when I don't want it to and you know what screw that I'm getting these because I have there is no way it can pull it out back in on its own you have to physically push it back into the machine and that's what I do have to do here and this drive starting to fail it's not reading DVDs anymore it reads CDs I have no idea if the Blu-ray half of this drive still works. And I also have this nice little slot loading machine. It does not handle mini discs, but it has this. I got this just because of the cool factor. I mean, not many computers have that nowadays, except maybe Macintosh. <laughs> but there you go. I show off my retro hardware. And maybe I'll have a 3DS related video in the future, but this is just something I've been wanting to post for a while now.